Little wrench. A16. What does that mean? So Tom's tinkering and adventures along with uh, Aaron's adventures and tinkering. We're going to be working on uh, 2016 Honda CRV today. Uh, and uh, hello, my friends. Welcome to Tom's tinkering and adventures. And I don't know what Aaron's adventures and tinkering if he has an opening or not, but uh, that's too bad. <laughs> so as you can see at the start here, we have an A16 maintenance code on here. So if you have a newer vehicle most of them have what's called a maintenance minder where it'll come up it'll tell you when your required maintenance items are due now i've already looked up what a a16 code is um, and we will check it out on the computer when we get back to the house right now we are headed to our local store here we're going to go to walmart actually pick up uh, oil and a filter because that is the a one portion of the code. I said I will show you all the codes when we get home, but I know what the A1 and B1 codes are. Um, so we're going to get the items we need for that. I've already purchased the items for the six portion of the code, which I will show you, like I said. Um, so we are on our way right now to go pick up some supplies. We'll see you at the store. Now this is something new. We got uh, engine oil. <coughs> locked up so we need zero w20 when it, when it comes to getting we, we already got oil thank you they just opened it yeah when it comes to getting your filter you can use a little electronic deal you can look it up you can look it up in this book or you can look it up online and i already know which filter i use because uh honda's been using the same filter for a long time i generally have been using fram filters and I know a lot of people hate Fram filters, but these uh, XG ones are pretty good, or the TG ones. So even Aaron knows. 73, well, you looked it up. Wait a sec. 7317. So um, either one of these, the TG or the XG, are really good filters. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of hate on the regular, regular orange filters. Now, um, agree or disagree, whatever it might be, but uh, they are here and available. Wix filters are really good. So Napa carries Wix filters as does O'Reilly's. Those would probably be my highest recommended filters, but as I said, the Fram TG XGs are rated pretty good as well. I gotta say that was uh, unusual, uh, that oil being locked up. This is a gallon of oil. Actually, five quarts of oil. So, this is like giant. Who the heck is stealing gallons of oil? Why do they have it locked up? I don't know, it's kind of confusing to me. What do you think? It doesn't make sense, but uh, as you can see, we have a little bit of moisture in the air here. Of course, we want to work on the car and it rained a little bit, but uh, I knew that there was a little bit of rain in the forecast. Hopefully it's just enough here to dampen the road and not dampen our spirits. We'll see you back at the Global Domination Headquarters. Okay, we survived the people of Walmart, which is a pretty big feat in itself. So I will show you the maintenance codes. So whatever vehicle you have, you could probably just type it in. So I got a Honda CRV A16. Or you can just type in service codes. Whatever vehicle you got. And it's probably in your manual as well now on this car the manual is all on a uh, cd or whatever so i'd have to look it up on the computer anyway and this comes up with all the codes so on the honda it'll first start telling you when it has 15 percent remaining five percent zero and if you go beyond zero it'll go negative miles i've been there before Sometimes you just get, you know, a couple days behind, whatever. And it's not going to blow up if you do such a thing. So, for your maintenance items, A means to just replace the engine oil. Oil only. Uh, you did see that I bought a filter. I always change the oil and filter. You're already in there. Uh, it's not a lot of money. I'm just going to go above and beyond a little bit. B 
means to replace engine oil and filter and then also inspect items. Now, those items usually are inspect the brakes, inspect the brake lines, inspect the uh, suspension, and so on and so forth, which I always do anyway. Maintenance sub items. So the one in this, so we have an A16. So A1 means to rotate tires and check tire pressure and conditions. We'll do that. And the six, replace rear differential fluid if equipped. Now this is an all wheel drive Honda CRV, so we do have rear differential fluid. I'll take you out to the garage and we will show you uh, the fluid and what we need to do to make this happen. One last look at the computer before we go outside here. This is a uh, tire rotation chart. So if you have a front wheel drive vehicle, which even though this CRV is considered all wheel drive, it is generally a front wheel drive. It has rear assist. We're gonna go with the center. So the front tires are gonna go to the back and the back tires are gonna cross over to the front. So that's how we're gonna do the tire rotation. Now here's a habit that I started a long time ago. I have a log book for all my vehicles. Um, and I put the, uh, the date and the mileage and the service that I performed. And then I also up here write the type of oil, the filter, and the drain plug. So that before I even go under there, I already know I need a 17 millimeter drain plug. It takes four and a half quarts of oil, zero W20. So the last time I serviced it was 21 March. So we obviously don't put too many miles on it. But it looks like it's about a 6,000 mile service. The maintenance minder sets it up on its own. So, well, let's get out here to the car. Oftentimes, if you don't know where else to look for what type of oil you need, there you go. Thank you, Aaron's Adventures and Tinkering. It's on your oil cap. Say what? All right, we've got the car on jack stands all around, all four wheels, since we're going to be doing a uh, tire rotation. Before you get underneath it, you want to give your car uh, a little, little shake because I would rather have the car fall on the jack stands and cause damage than to fall on me and cause damage. I can fix cars. I'm not good at fixing people. So we got our 17 millimeter and uh, here's my all purpose oil filter wrench. So we're gonna get the oil draining. And uh, while he's doing that, I'm going to pull all the wheels off. I highly recommend getting one of these little magnetic bowls. This one here, as you can see, is uh, made in China. Um, but they're really convenient. Throw all the lug nuts in there. And then if you're working under the uh, engine, you can actually stick this thing. It's magnetic, so it'll stick to something that is a ferrous metal. And you can throw nuts and bolts in there. And I use my Ryobi Impact driver to remove the all the wheels. It works pretty good and I can drive them back on with that, but that will not set enough uh, torque to have these tires ready to go for the road. So make sure once, if you're using an impact driver, that you uh, go back and you torque them properly. If you're using an impact wrench, you just go to three Ugga Duggas. And uh, I can see Aaron has properly changed the oil here. He's got a dirty hand. How you doing, son? Ah, oh, this is crap. Yeah, you uh, when you change oil, that's like a rite of passage. If you don't know how to do an oil change, well, it's uh, I'm not gonna make an entire video on it, but this one is very easy to do actually. You barely have to jack this car up. You could probably do it without. Um, the oil drain is right behind here. You can't quite see it. It's on the back side, and the oil filter is right there so easy to get to on this vehicle some of them are a big pain in the butt and it looks like the Grinch sent me this it says spoiler alert it's socks but it's not socks we didn't get socks my son is sad because he wanted socks it's all, wanted. it's all he wanted for Christmas so I ordered up a set of I think there's 10 of these crush rings for the drain plugs on here now I am probably one of the worst people when it comes to changing these I will change my oil a dozen times without changing these but 10 of them was like a dollar more than one and you can see exactly where they came from here I don't speak that language and then I also ordered up this 
fancy Honda oil, dual pump fluid too. I'm usually not big of a believer on specialty oils. Um, I put, don't tell anybody, but I put car oil in my motorcycles. It's actually diesel truck oil. But from doing some reading, the rear differential on the Hondas has kind of an unusual built-in clutch system because this is a front-wheel drive car and then it senses traction slipping and it sends traction to whatever wheel and it's electronic uh, clutches in there, whatever. So I ordered up this stuff. You don't have to change it that often and I don't remember it being terribly expensive. Maybe $10 a quart or something like that, which is what they wanted for oil on the shelf on Walmart unless you got behind the behind the uh, locked case so that's what we got in here so we're going to get to that rear differential once uh we finish up this oil change i think that these fit on every drain plug on this car but we'll find out these are supposed to be at least for the rear differential aaron's adventures and tinkering is busy getting the oil filter off get another dirty handful of oil actually stayed pretty clean not too bad in the meantime, I opened up this one here to make sure we got the right one. You always want to visually inspect it. I've ended up getting new filters that have had damaged threads. Um, these rubber O-rings being messed up. So, I mean, it's quality control. They pump out thousands of these, so they're bound to have an error once in a while. And you want to put just a little bit of oil on this O-ring here. This rubber seal, it's not really an O-ring. Put a little bit of oil on it. Clean oil, dirty oil, eh, whatever. It's not going to hurt. Really, the reason why you're doing that is just to prevents it from sticking and one final tip is to make sure that that ring is on the filter you take off because some yeah it's hard to tell it's on there sometimes that sticks onto the vehicle and if you don't pay attention when you put this on you'll have double rubber seals and it will leak all the oil out if you don't look underneath here you'll make it about a mile or two and you'll blow up your engine <coughs> I've had that happen to me two times in my illustrious career so it can happen. Okay, we put cardboard down too. That's another pro tip. Save a cardboard box, put it down because no matter how careful you are, you're gonna spill a little bit. No matter how careful you are, your hand's gonna get a little dirty. Um, nice big oil catch can, which is always nice. So now we're gonna add the four and a half quarts up here and we'll be done with the oil change. So my son convinced me that, uh, and of course he's right, it's always a good idea to start the car after you change the oil and just take a quick peek. Make sure nothing crazy is happening underneath. And then make sure that your oil light isn't staying on. Make sure you don't see smoke rolling out of anywhere. And then shut it off and check the oil level after that. So the oil change part is done. I have also moved all the tires to their new positions. So the tires will be ready to go on, but before we do that, we have to do the uh, sixth portion of this, which is the rear differential. And also, at the same time, we're gonna be doing all the inspections. Inspect the brakes, inspect the tie rod ends, suspension, uh, all the basic stuff underneath the car here. But uh, I did a video on that uh, maybe a month or two months ago, something like that. I'll try to link it if I remember to, but uh, that's all pretty simple stuff. But we're gonna get to this rear differential because that's something that um, many people maybe haven't done. Okay, this CRV is the all-wheel drive version. They do make just a front-wheel drive version, but this is all-wheel drive. You can tell because there is a CV joint right here and a CV joint right there in the rear differential. And let me see if we can get underneath here. Rear drive shaft. So this is the rear differential right here. This is the drain bolt for it. Holy smokes, this thing is sitting up on three. This thing was barely even touching. That's kind of dangerous. Aaron. What? <laughs> this is the drain bolt right here, and as you can see, it's just a square. So what do you think fits in there, Aaron? An extension. An extension off of a 3 8 inch drive. And the fill port is on the other side. I'm gonna stop the video and we'll go over there and I'll show you where the fill port is. Now this is the driver's side rear. I have the wheel off, of course. So let's go in here. And that is the fill port, right? There, so it's the same. You just use a 3 8 inch drive extension or 3 8 inch drive socket or breaker bar or whatever to open that. And how you fill up a differential is you fill it up until the level of the uh, lower threads when that's off. 
Now we have two options on this, or several options, sure. You could use a pump and pump it in. Um, I have my big syringe, I could use that. And that actually is not a bad idea. It looks like we could get close to it with the syringe. Or we can just use a long hose. We get the wheel off. We can run a hose down from here and fill it right in here anywhere, as long as it's higher than that level. Now, one tip that I have learned, and I learned the hard way, when you're filling something like this, where um, the drain is on the bottom and the fill is not just a screw cap, but it's something you have to break loose like this, like a bolt. You wanna take, take the fill port off first because what happens is, let's say we took the drain port off, drained all the fluid out of here, then came over here to try to get the fill port off and we can't get it off. At that point, you're stranded. Yeah. You are stranded until you can get that off because there's no way that you could fill it. On an engine, it's simple, right? The uh, the oil fill, just a plastic screw cap or whatever. But on here, this is a mechanical type deal, you know, like a bolt. And it could strip out, anything could happen. So you always want to take the fill port off first. If that messes up, we're fine. We can figure it out, work it out. But if we drain it out first and then that doesn't come off, uh -oh. then you're kind of screwed. So what we're going to do is we're going to loosen that first. Then we're going to bring the drain pan over here. We're going to drain it and then we will fill this up. And from what I have researched, it takes about one and a half quarts. So I had two quarts of that uh, Honda special uh, fluid, whatever it is, DPSF or something it's called. I think it even says it on here. If you zoom in. DPSF. DPSF. Okay, this is the fill port. We're gonna loosen that, which actually I've already busted it loose, but I'm just kind of showing you. So that one is now loose, as you can see. We can take that all the way off. It doesn't really matter. That's the fill port. That's good. And we've already loosened this one as well, but uh, just showing you. We've already got the fill port off, so now we will remove the drain port. And hopefully it won't make too much of a mess here. And there you go, let that drain until it's, uh, until it's through, draining out. Now, most of these uh, drain plugs have a magnet on them and you can see all the, all the crud on here. That's why you change your fluid that's regular wear. That's not something to be majorly concerned about, but that's why Honda recommends you change this often. All right, so now we have to get this Honda fluid in way in there. So it's uh, not like pointing in the top of the engine. So I bought this a while ago to do items like this. I could take the fluid out of there. Hopefully this would reach in here. Let's take a look. That would work. The issue I have with this is that it's 150 milliliters and it takes one and a half of these. This is 946 milliliters, so let's say it's 1500 milliliters, so that would be 10 times, which would be a little bit annoying. Then you have this hand pump. You could use this as well. The problem I have with this is that I've used it for many different things, usually for filling rear differentials on, on uh, vehicles uh, with 80W90 weight. So this thing is probably got ADW90 fluid a little bit trapped in it and it's a little bit cumbersome it's made to go into a one gallon jug so this would have to sit in here and then you pump it I have to hope that that stays in there but this works they also make little um, pumps you can buy that pump like this uh, maybe a little electric ones I think what we're gonna try is I've got this that I've used for similar items and it looks like it's going to reach see if we can get it through here. Thank you for the camera work, Aaron's Adventures and Tinkering. And that reaches right there, and then we can fill this right here. So it'll be a little bit slow going, but it shouldn't be too bad. Let's see if it works. And is it going in there? I don't see it leaking. Not leaking yet. Not yet. I'm overfilled this a little bit, so it's kind of slow going. But this will work. All right, it might be really difficult to see, 
but you fill it up until it is at the level of the bottom of this. Yeah, I didn't think I'd be able to get in there and see it, but once it starts kind of draining out of there a little bit, that's when you have enough in there. And I can see it. It's just hard to see with the camera here. But now we uh, put on the fill plug, clean everything up, and we'll be done with this portion. Of course, we're going to go behind and uh, apply proper torque on these afterwards. These are just driven on to uh, hold the wheels so we can drop it uh, back down onto her feet. Okay, my second to last step for finishing this up is to write it down. So, date, miles, and then the service performed. And as you can see, like I said, it's about 6,000 miles between service on this vehicle. And I don't know if I did this one at 10% or 0 or 5, but... The first oil change was at 65.54. So anywhere between 6,000 and 7,000 probably is where the Honda seems to kick it out. So it might be kind of odd that we have to do an oil differential or a rear differential at 19,000, but it's uh, not a big deal. It was pretty easy. The last thing you have to do to finish out this service is to reset this, get rid of this wrench and get rid of this service light. Now, every vehicle is different, so this is just gonna apply to this Honda. I don't know if every Honda is the same or not, but for the Honda, what you need to do is press and hold this odometer reset, and it's like five or 10 seconds. You hold it until this thing is gonna flash. And we're waiting patiently, there we go. Then you let go of it, and then you press it again and hold it. And now we're back, 100%. The wrench is gone. Service is performed. Service has been documented. We don't have any crazy lights on the dash. Everything is good to go. Bravo. Cheers, job well done. So A16 service on a Honda CRV. Uh, if you call around, um, it's about 200 to 300 dollars to get that done. Uh, the oil was 25 dollars. The oil filter was eight dollars. The other two quarts of oil were about 10 dollars each. So all said and done, we're in at about 50 dollars plus some beer. Plus, well, the beer is optional, but uh, highly recommended. This video brought to you today by. Paps Blue Ribbon American Pale Ale. Let Paps know about uh, Tom's Tinkering and Adventures and maybe even Aaron's Adventures and Tinkering. Yeah. So, uh, Happy New Year to everyone. It's the end of 2018. I had a very good year. I don't know as if I'll ever have quite as much fun as I had this year, but you never know until the next one comes around. Uh, Aaron, last day visiting us this year, of course. Yeah, yeah, you can make all the jokes, but. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for coming out and visiting and helping out on some videos. I appreciate it. It's been fun, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in Japan pretty soon. Talk about an adventure. What? Yeah, I know. That's awesome. But thank you very much, as always, for watching. Get out there and find your adventure. Adios. Adios. Cheers.